there is some good news. Donald Trump is pulling a lot of cabinet picks from the Republican House, which means that it's, I, I think he's pulled enough that they're not going to have a majority from the get-go. They're going to have to run special elections to replace the, uh, he's put like five people, hasn't he? seen so many photoshopped images of JD Vance that now whenever I'm looking at him in this official portrait, I genuinely cannot tell if it's fake or not. Or if it's if it's just like another variant of him being a little like blueberry boy, you know, with the spinny hat. I love the propeller hat one. Yeah, it's 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 very good. It's very good. <laughs> it's gonna be Secretary of Education. Um Oh right! Uh Christy Noam. Fantastic. This was also just an hour ago. I completely forgot to talk about that. The dog killer. It, it, it genuinely is crazy that one of the prerequisites for being a Republican is that you have to be obviously evil. Like, there aren't even any people anymore who are, like, quietly biding their time and they come across as sensible, but internally they're evil. All of them are now openly, like, crazy evil, you know? The right crucified her for that, by the way. Well, now instead of shooting dogs, she'll be shooting Mexicans at the border. So, it, you know, maybe they're they're giving her a second chance. Yeah, we talked about Doge. She's crazy. They're all crazy. They're all completely crazy. Our, basically, our only hope, like genuinely our only hope in terms of this country surviving, is that all of these people... Because I, I genuinely, I don't know if... Our liberal institutions are going to do anything to push back on this. So incompetence is like the only thing we're really hoping for here. Because these are like genuinely very stupid people. The, the, it is a natural property of fascism that you, like as a, as a consequence of the anti-empirical nature of the ideology, that they are bad at making decisions. But, you know, they can keep it going for a while before it falls apart. They can do plenty of harm before it falls apart. Uh, what what was I talking about? Oh, the point that I was trying to get at is that I'm um, I'm pretty sure that he's already picked enough people from the House that they're going to have to, they won't even have a congressional majority until after. I guess that makes sense, though, because the for, for a while, it's just going to be a bunch of executive orders, you know? How f funny would it be if Dems blitzed the special elections, like, as quickly as they could, and they ended up losing the House majority? What can he do with just executive orders? I mean whatever he wants, because the only thing that you can do to challenge them would be to, like, do so in court. And the Supreme Court is conservative. As far as I can tell, only one of those seats might be flipped. But, oh, no, 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 I, I was being facetious. The odds of actually flipping those seats are basically none. What's, like, the worst-case scenario for these? Uh, well, I guess there's... It, Ken Paxton, Attorney General, would be monstrous. A lot of these departments are basically just not going to, like, functionally exist, you know? Secretary of the Interior, Agriculture, Labor, Transportation, Education, obviously. Probably Veterans Affairs as well. Like, they're not going to do anything. North Carolina's Michelle Morrow wants Trump to put her in charge of education. I mean, they're, they're going to just cut the department, so. Ken Paxton isn't even on the list of people who are going to be considered for AG. Really? Morgan, you served with Secretary Mike Pompeo. You probably know Nikki Haley very well. Are you surprised by the announcement from President-elect Trump that they will not be part of the next Trump administration? No, uh, Donald Trump has a political mandate from the American people uh, to bring in whomever he thinks is the best fit for his next administration. And I think he has an embarrassment of riches to choose from. Many of the names being floated about amongst the uh, national security Mike cabinet Lee, positions are people that I know and have worked with for a long time that have remained very loyal to the president and I know will execute his policies. And that's ultimately what you need in a national security cabinet. You get yeah, behind really. the scenes, you debate what policy, but when the president makes a decision, you work to execute it. And I think he has an embarrassment of riches of choices that people could come into the cabinet. John Ratcliffe, the appointment to lead the CIA was criticized for potentially making intelligence services political, then did it? Do you feel like even if the Trump administration didn't do away with democracy and voting, that the right has become so emboldened that it might be hard to get a Democrat elected at all for a while? I don't know. There's there's a, there's a, a bunch of different ways this can go, honestly. Like, the, the, the only saving grace we have here from an electoral perspective, like from a harm reduction, like Democrats learn no lessons but still get to win in the future anyway because the Republicans are just that bad. The only hope we have in that vein would be that 
uh, the economy immediately crashes. And as a consequence of the economy immediately crashing, uh, the, the Trump administration just isn't able to weaponize the, the federal government as effectively as they want to. Honestly, the best case scenario here might actually be an almost immediate economic crash, not because it wouldn't hurt a lot of people. It, it would, unfortunately, but because in the it would probably like at least temporarily prevent the Trump administration from being able to focus on their long term goal of ending all life on Earth. Whereas if they manage to keep things going through a, the, you know, like a stock market boom cycle for a bit because investors are happy that they can do whatever the f*** they want. So we have to hope that he f*** the country. He's going to f*** the country. Do you think this election is going to see a shift away from neoliberalism towards more populist politics on the left? I don't, I don't know what group you're referring to. You mean with the Democrats? So far, the Democrats have obstinately refused to learn any lessons from this. It seems like all we're going to get from this is like, Republicans are going to destroy the country. Democrats won't do much to stop them. And meanwhile, you know, uh, uh, a Democrat chair will be like, well, if only more leftists had voted for us, maybe we should have run a more centrist policy. Well, we'll get through it one day at a time. You know, ideally. This guy's got such a funny portrait. His name's Radcliffe. He kind of looks like a rat, doesn't he? No, he looks like a cartoon dad. Like, in a cartoon made in the 1950s. You know what I mean? During his time in Congress, Ratcliffe was regarded as one of the most conservative members. That's cool. He does look a bit like Timmy Turner's dad, yeah. There are a lot of people who are being elevated in these cabinet picks that are not neocons necessarily, but they're not the same kind of fascist as the regular MAGA crowd, if that makes any sense. Like, a lot of them seem to be really hawkish it's a mix of both yeah i mean they're all like extremely loyal this feels like trying to work out if you're 95 percent cooked or 98 percent cooked it's pretty irrelevant yeah i suppose so hawkish on china and iran not on russia imo that is true you have to be like pro russia to be part of trump's um inner circle now they wouldn't like it otherwise not knowing both those countries are allied with russia iran and china aren't really allied with russia it's a lot more complicated than that Aligned is better than allied, yeah. Oh, cool. So wait, are we going to remain the global hegemonic power and abandon NATO? Oh, this is going to be a real shit show. Isn't the uh, Secretary of Defense pick, uh, Hegseth, isn't he um, a NATO skeptic? I think he said that before. I think he's a NATO skeptic. I.e., he doesn't want to be a part of it because he thinks that Europeans are gay or something. Is there really any threat of NATO being dissolved? That seems like the most out there extreme speculation I've heard. Um, I mean, it can happen. There's no reason why it couldn't happen. America basically wouldn't be affected by it. No, one or two. Just one. Um, well, we'd be affected by it in a broader geopolitical sense, but it's not like we're under threat of being invaded. Uh, mostly what it would do is kind of foster in a global dark age of, you know, isolationism, nationalism, nativism. It would get rid of like that, like the, a broader project of like, uh, you know, unification through adverse or like in spite of adversity would kind of be gone, at least in the West. There are other countries out there that are trying to work together. But, you know, do you think them should just focus their efforts in the midterms for now? Focus their efforts, the midterms, what midterms? What midterms? What are you talking about? Dems, uh, like, look, right now the Democrats can't even admit why they lost. DNC chair race happening, please put the thumb on the scale. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna... Yeah, all the other countries could still be in NATO if we left it, but there's not really a precedent for America leaving NATO, you know? Yeah, Ness Scissors, he said that a while ago. Do you think if the Trump administration tried to pass those military reforms, the Pentagon would just tell them no? I mean, how would they do that? Trump has the ability to fire any officer in the... He's the commander-in-chief. How would the Pentagon say no? He would just fire the people who say no and then replace them. They could all threaten to resign the same way Barr's DOJ did. I think that if they did that, Trump would call the bluff and probably just say, like, yeah, okay, resign, you know? Why didn't he do it then, then? Because there's a difference between now and then. <laughs> Trump said to pull troops out of Syria and the Pentagon said no. Yeah, but I, that's because like at that time, I think that tr like Trump didn't have the manpower or political will or the influence to go about just like willy nilly firing people, you know, like dropping every four star general, which he can do, by the way, if he wants to, because, you know, replacing them and the institutional like it's but it's kind of like it's, it's all off the hook now, you know?
His first term was just firing people for four years. Yeah, mostly people that he chose, though. Not like generals of the Pentagon. What if they just ignore Trump? I don't know. What if you got a job? What do you want me to say? Think about how I have to answer these questions, okay? It's you, there ha listen, okay? There's you, the part of your brain that generates the question and then there's an electrical process and your fingers type it out, okay? What needs to happen is that in the middle of that process, another part of your brain says like, is this a worthwhile contribution? They're just asking questions. What if they just say no? I don't know. What if the moon falls into Lake Michigan? I don't know.